In this video we're going to take a look at the Vader challenge from the Space Hero CTF. It's a pwn challenge, the difficulty is medium and the description says submit the flag from the server address and port number that we're given. We're also given a binary to get things working locally first of all, so let's download that. Let me move that to Vader and we'll have a look at the file type first of all. It's a 64-bit executable, it's not stripped, so we're going to be able to see the function names and things like that. We could have a quick look at the security protections enabled as well with CheckSec and see that we've got no canaries, we've got no pi, so the program's going to load at the same base address each time. But we do have NX enabled, so we're not going to be able to inject shellcode and expect it to execute on the stack. So we'll make the program executable and then we'll try and run it and see what output we get. It asks us for some input here, so we can try and put in a really long string and see do we overflow the buffer, do we cause a segmentation fault, and we do. But we want to go and try and find out how many A's we entered here in order to overflow the buffer and overwrite that return address and see what we might want to do with that return address. Are there any interesting functions that we can jump to? Something like that. So I'm going to open up Ghidra. I've got this Ghidra auto script, so We'll set that up in the temp directory, just pass in the Vader binary, and that's just going to automatically analyze and profile the binary, just speed up the booting process a little bit. When we get into Gears, we can see our decompiler here on the right and our assembler on the left. So we'll have a look at the main function where it starts off. You can see that it just has this print DAR, so it printed out that big banner message and then it's going to read in some input from us. It's using fgets, which is actually a secure function because it sets how many bytes to read in. The problem is the developer has asked it to read in 256 bytes into what is a 32 byte buffer. So we've got 32 bytes in the buffer and we've got our saved RBP as well. So that means in order to overwrite the return address, we'll need to put in 40 bytes, 32 plus our RBP, and then we'll be at the return address, which means when we get down to this point in the function, Instead of returning to where it should return, it will return to whatever address we overflow that RIP with. And where do we want to overflow it with? Well, we've got this Gadget 1 and Gadget 2 which are interesting. That gives us a hint that we're going to need to use these gadgets. And these are some POP gadgets. We've got POP RCX, POP RDX, POP R9 and R8. So that will pop some values into those registers for us. And we've got this Ignore Me, so there's nothing interesting there. We've got this Print Darth. We've already looked at that and we have Vader. So this is our win function. So this is a return to win challenge. We just need to call this function and it's going to open up the flag and print out the flag on screen. The only thing is we also need to provide some parameters. So it takes five parameters here. We've got dark side of the force are the five parameters that we need to provide. And if these string compares aren't met, if it doesn't come back true, then we're not going to get the flag. So essentially we need to find our pop gadgets. We know that we've been given some gadgets here we need to meet the calling convention for 64 bits. So the way that parameters are passed into functions, they're popped into registers. So the first value is going to go into the RDI. The second one is going to go into the RSI. The third is going to go into the RDX. The fourth is going to go into the RCX. And then the fifth is going to go into R8. So we need to go and find those gadgets. We do have them in Geodra, but I, I like to use the tool ROPPER to find these. So we can do ROPPER dash dash file pass in the file name and then we'll search for pop RDI. Next we'll look for a pop RSI, that's going to be our second parameter. We don't actually have a pop RSI so we can use this gadget, we just need to bear in mind that it's going to also pop the next value on the stack into the R15 register. So we'll need to put some padding or some junk there just in order to fill that space. And then we also need our RDX. So we've got a pop RDX gadget, that's great. We need our RCX, which we do have, but we also, oh, we have one that has RCX and R8. So that's actually our last two gadgets, our last two pop instructions. So these are the gadgets that we're going to need. We can go and put these into a Pwn Tools script. But just before we do that, let's open up GDB. I'm using the Pwn Debug plugin. And let's just see how we could also have found out the offset. So we know that we've got 40 bytes that we want to overwrite before we're going to get to that return address. But we could also work this out using GDB. So we can generate a cyclic pattern of 100 bytes. Take a copy of that. We'll run the program. We'll paste that in. 
and then we'll just have a look and see what would have made it into the RIP so we'll take these four bytes from the beginning of the RSP and then we'll do cyclic L to look that up and find out that the offset is 40. So just to show there's a couple of ways we can do that we can work it out from static analysis we can work it out with GDB and we can also use pwn tools to do the same sort of things so let me just open up an exploit script now this exploit script's not actually right but I just want to show this as a demonstration I got a question a couple of days ago on one of my YouTube videos which was looking at a return to win style challenge like we have here where we have some parameters that we need to pass in but the parameters we need to pass in were just literal values in this case we have pointers so it's slightly different so let's just have a look at the incorrect script first of all you can see that this is part of a template I use for Pwn tool scripts so a lot of this stuff up here doesn't change we've got a find instruction pointer function which as I just mentioned you can find the offset to the instruction pointer in Pwn tools which is what this function will do so it's gonna send off a cyclic pattern in this case of 100 bytes and it's gonna wait for the program to crash it's gonna read the core dump and see what was the offset of the four bytes in the RIP so that'll come back with 40 we could very easily just type in 40 here as well but just if you want to automate things and we've got a function here to make it quite easy to swap between GDB remote and local which we'll see shortly we've got GDB scripts we can set up breakpoints and things here and then we've just got our binary declared we've got our context set meaning we don't need to provide our addresses in 64-bit format we can just give it the address and it knows to pack it into a 64-bit format. We've also got our gadgets here, so I've just basically taken these from Ropper, the ones that we found. You can also find these in Pwn Tools as well, but uh, this will do for now. And then we're going to put together our payload. So our payload is going to pop dark into the RDI, it's going to pop side into the RSI, some junk into the R15, we're going to pop OV into the RDX, we're going to pop the force into RCX and R8. And with our five parameters in place, we're ready to call the function Vader. We're also going to write the payload to a file, just means you can reuse it, you can send it off to the remote server if you want. And we're going to send off the payload and see do we get back a flag. Now, we need to have a flag as well, so let me just do echo and we'll put fake flag in flag.txt. Note that I also had a breakpoint set up there, so I set up a breakpoint at the first string compare so let's have a look our string compare here we can basically set up a breakpoint at this address we could do it at each one if we wanted and just see what values are in the what values are being compared do they line up or are they what we expected so let's try and run it let's do python exploit we run through that we've got some debugging output at the beginning and it's just looking for the offset of the rip which was 40 and then we send off our actual buffer overflow with our parameters. So we've got our pop RDI gadgets in here, or pop RSI, or RCX, etc. And then we call the force, not the force function, what's it called? The Vader function. But we got an end of file, we didn't get a flag. So let's go over to GDB Pwn Debug again. And in here, actually, let's set up a breakpoint. Let me take a copy of this breakpoint here. So that was for the string compare. Okay, I forgot to provide the file name whenever I loaded it, so let's provide that now, file vader. Let's run that again. Oh, I forgot to also send the payload. Let's do run and then send the payload in with the angular bracket. We run through that, we hit our breakpoint here, and we've got the string compare, and we can see what the problem is immediately. So we've got S1 is being compared to S2, and essentially S2 is a address which is holding the location of this dark string so it's a pointer to the string whereas s1 which we've provided is simply a literal value so we can go and unhex that and see that that's just the literal value and we need to provide this as a pointer so this was the question that I got on one of my videos recently and the way we can do that is because we know that these strings are actually in the binary let's have a look we know that these strings are here for the comparison so we can have a look for them in the binary and see what the addresses are. Let me uh, let me close that down actually. Let me open it again. I'm going to set a breakpoint at main. Oh, I forgot to provide the file name again. I'm going to set a breakpoint at main. Run the program. We hit our breakpoint and now what we're going to do is search for string and look for that first string which is dark. 
And notice that we have the address here, so 402104. So we could take a copy of that address. Let's go and replace this literal value with that address. And then we need the RSI one as well, which was side. So we'll go and do the same thing. And we can get the address here as well. Let's take a copy of that. And before we do them all, let's just compare what happens when we have that breakpoint now. So we'll go ahead and run the exploit again, Python exploit. It's going to generate that payload file. And then we're just going to run this again, pass in the payload. We've got our breakpoint here at main. Actually, we don't want that there. We want a breakpoint again at the string compare. So let's set that up. Let's hit continue. And now we hit this comparison again. And look at that. That's looking a lot better. It's comparing two addresses. But it's not actually comparing the address. It's comparing what's, what's being held at that address. And in both cases, it equals dark. So if we hit next, it's going to continue. It'll go through and it'll try to compare our next value as well, which we need to go and set up some of the other values. So let's go back and do that. Just save a little time. I'll copy this over. And essentially, I've just updated this with all the addresses which I use the search command in GDB to find. So we pop all those addresses into the correct registers. And then we're going to call elf.functions.vader. And it should give us the flag. Let's try it out. Python exploit. We get our fake flag, which is excellent. Let's try and do it remotely as well. Python exploit. And because we have that function at the start of our template, we can just type in remote in capital letters and then grab the server address and port number. We can paste this in, run the binary again, run the exploit again, and we get back our flag. So that's been the Vader challenge. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, Leave them down below. Thanks.